So an entire simple JSF application. Let's take a look at some code for a simple yet totally complete JSF application. We will create an address data entry application. In the view layer, we have two forms. We have the basic form, which is where the user enters their address information, and then another JSP um, for a success message if everything goes OK after the address is added. In the controller layer, we're going to add functionality from a managed bean. So we are going to actually create a managed bean. We've already seen the source code for the Java bean in a previous example, and we've seen how it gets registered in uh, faces config. But now we're going to take a look at specifically a little more complex view layer um, looking at using uh, more of the JSF special uh, tags. The model layer, to keep things simple, we're not going to develop the model layer. Don't, don't forget the JSF implementation and specification does not apply to the model layer. You're free to plug in and implement whatever model layer in your application, whichever makes sense for you. In most cases in the industry, people look at uh, plain old Java objects or using JSF as the front end for an EJB application or using it as the controller and presentation layer or view layer uh, with EJBs acting as the uh, model layer. Also data transfer objects which are relatively new. These are all just various uh, specifications around model layers in uh, Java. So the input form. This is what it would look like and on the side we see a little snapshot of uh, what this code might look at. What this code would produce. So we have our view element. That's our root element for JSF components. We have an HTML body tag. We have an H2 tag, a BR tag. These are all standard HTML tags. But notice um, for our form element, inside of the body element, instead of a traditional HTML form element, we're using the JSF specific form element. So we see the prefix h colon form open close uh, tag. We also see instead of uh, traditional input elements in HTML, we're using the JSF specific uh, HTML input elements. In this case, we're using one, two, three, uh, input text. Input text is the element that we're using. The value and this is the first time we've uh, seen this, the value of input text, these three input text elements, um, inside of the quotes, it looks like the JSP expression language, except instead of the dollar sign, we see the pound sign used. This is JSF specific syntax for evaluating the properties of beans. Okay, so um, the value of input text, these three input text values, the fields will be populated with the property of first name, last name, and city respectively, or they will be empty if those values have not been populated. And then the uh, fourth element we see in our form is not a traditional HTML button or submit button, we're using the JSF specific command button uh, with the H prefix type equals submit, value equals add address, um, which really essentially becomes our label. But the action uh, attribute, again, set to a specific um, JSF expression with the pound sign, because this is an action, this will be taken in the JSF framework and what's going to happen is that on the address bean instance, it's actually going to execute the method add new address. Okay, so we see a couple of examples here in value attributes uh, using the JSF syntax to uh, get property values or set property values within the bean instance called address. Notice what's missing um, from this uh, JSP is any reference to the actual address. And we saw this with other uh, 
JSPs where we didn't have to explicitly use, say, the JSP use bean tag. Um, we relied on the system to find it in a specific scope. In JSF, we saw in the faces config when you create uh, the manage bean element and you configure the manage bean element, two things are uh, important in the manage bean element in faces config, the name of the bean instance and the scope of the bean instance. So in JSF, you have to be a little more specific about how you scope these, but um, we'll see them in just a second. Okay, so that's a basic input form. The results, thanks, dot JSP. Notice we're not writing any controller code here. We'll get to that in just a second. The results, very simple again. Uh, two tag lib directives for the JSF uh, tags, our view element, our body element, and then output text, value from first name, value from last name of the address bean instance. Um, using JSF specific syntax. In other words, the pound sign is indicating we're looking for a JSF managed bean that is properly tagged in the config file. So very simple, that's where we're going. Now the actual address bean, what does that actually look like? That's Java code. It is a piece of Java code, a couple of properties declared for rendering on this slide. We've omitted general getters and setters, um, but they, you know, the example get city, set city, you would go through all the properties that way and set up uh, standard getters and setters. But notice a regular business method called add new address, and we print out some stuff, uh, print out last name, print out city, and return the label success. This is key because in the um, flow of our application, the navigational flow, which JSF uh, extended from the struts framework, the navigational flow is done by these uh, string elements or actions or uh, named outputs or named return values. So if we look at the faces config file, to add what's called a navigation rule. In addition to our managed bean element, we're going to add a navigation rule. The element looks like this, navigation rule, navigation case. In other words, in case this happens. Uh, the from action, um, in other words, some action was actually called, this actual named action was actually called. The from outcome is success which we saw on the previous slide with our add new address uh, method, the return value is literally the string success. And so the to view ID element is relative to our JSF application, the name of the JSP that the uh, faces servlet will hand over if the add new address action is called, in other words, it's clicked, if the method the business method returns success, in other words, from outcome is literally the string success, then it will uh, go from this action with this outcome to this view, to view ID slash thanks JSP. I never believe anything that I see or hear an instructor say. So let's go try this in Eclipse and prove to ourselves that this will work and that we can understand what it is that we're doing while we're using Eclipse. So let's go take a look. So let's expand on our JSF uh, experience by building more uh, comprehensive, even still relatively simple, but more comprehensive, more uh, robust application using what we've learned so far about building a JSF application. So I'll leave my hello JSP, that, that's fine. We'll work with the hello JSF application, but we're going to add functionality to our application and uh, add additional features and watch how, uh, what configuration elements we need to change, uh, what it is that we're adding based on um, what we've seen so far. So I'm going to create a new JSP.
Um, I knew JSP. I can go through the wizards. I knew uh, JSP file. And this will be my input form JSP. OK. And uh, on my next screen, I'm going to make sure that I get the right skeleton code um, and click Finish, and that's fine. Um, but as we saw in the slides, you know, we've got the basic code um, where we need it to be. So we'll just copy and paste it right from the sample. What we're mostly interested in is the form element nested inside of the view element. We also want to make sure that we have the uh, tag lib directives, the appropriate tag lib directives, which we already do from the tool. We have the uh, tool bringing in the correct tag libraries for us. Um, and then what we're most interested in is the functionality of the JSF, JSP tags. Um, the input text elements, uh, the command button element, the form element, the JSF, JSP form element instead of the traditional uh, HTML form element. And we know that it needs to be embedded inside of a view element for JSF. That's part of the specification. So what I'm going to quickly copy and paste is, in fact, just what's within that view element. Uh, copy, paste, and yeah, you know, we're fine. One of the things that you you want to take advantage of from Eclipse again is uh, the properties view and the outline view being tied together. Where I have input text this time instead of output text or command button, and the properties view updates and validates and shows you what your various attributes are. Um, you can use the properties window to put everything in the right place. It saves typos more than anything. But it also shows me a comprehensive list of the optional attributes for, say, in this case, a uh, command button. It's a little difficult to get your focus in the right place, which is why I use the outline view. The properties view should update as you move through the source, and now it is. But if I can't get it to work, I use the uh, outline view and the properties view to make sure the binding is correct. So what is it we're doing on the input form? We're using the tags, the JSF tags, um, instead of traditional HTML tags. We're using JSF syntax, note the pound sign. We're looking for an object instance which is named address somewhere uh, so the system can discover it. We're looking for the first name property. We're looking for the last name property. We're looking for the city property. We're putting a submit button in. And upon submit, it's going to call uh, the system. The JSF implementation is going to call a method called add new address and call that business method on the instance called address. Nothing to test here because we've got a couple of configuration elements that need to be in place before this is going to work. Okay, what we need to do is define um, address. The first thing I'm going to do is write the Java code for an address instance. In other words, I'm going to write Java Bean code, Java Bean Java code um, that can then be implemented as a managed bean within the JSF framework. So this needs to be saved. So I'll be sure and save that because, you know, I'm always disciplined. I don't ever make any mistakes. Uh, yeah, I do. So I'm going to create a new package, a new Java package within my project. And um, this is for discipline, for organization. So I will create a package called uh, com dot my jsf dot beans um, just so that my code is clearly organized um, for JSF for beans. Okay. Um, now what I'm writing is just the Java bean code. Okay. Um, I happen to have it, and it's a Java file just exactly what we saw on the slides or what you see out on the Google machine. 
um, when you're looking at samples, but it's a traditional Java bean. I can drag it into my package, and as long as the package declaration builds, um, I'm fine. So the address bean code, now notice on the slides we couldn't, you know, we didn't want to fit all the getters and setters because we were concentrating on just specific pieces, but in the actual running code, I've got all the properties of my Java bean, uh, first name, last name, street, city, zip, and the getters and the setters for those properties, get city, set city, uh, get first name, set first name, et cetera, et cetera, in traditional getter setter uh, format. And notice I also have a business method called add new address. We've seen this before when we looked at the uh, input form JSP, the action uh, element, uh, the action attribute set to a JSF instance of something named address. We haven't gotten to that yet, but it's going to call a method called add new address. Add new address. Add new address does whatever it is that it wants to do. Um, in this case, we're, you know, we're just printing out uh, uh, some information on the console so we can see what's happening. And we're returning a string, literally the word success. Okay. Now, for this Java bean code to be a managed bean within the JSF framework, then I need to add a managed bean element to faces config. Okay. So I open faces config and I can go to the managed bean uh, tab. I can add to the request scope, I can add to the application scope, I can add to the session scope. Let's add it to the application scope. And I'm using the fancy editor here, uh, which is our productivity tool. Um, I uh, click add. After we do this, we'll go and we'll look at the actual XML because this is what you'll see in the examples and in the documentation. I'm going to use an existing Java class. I can start typing address bean and since it's in my build path it picks up the bean code and I say thank you and next and it asked me what scope I already chose application so it populated that field but the name of the bean it suggests to me a name derived from the Java class but hopefully you remembered that what we're looking for in our JSP is something with the name address, an instance with the name address. And so I'm going to change this. I can change it after the wizards, um, but it's actually going to configure an instance of this bean to work within the JSF framework, and it's going to be scoped at the application level. Okay. So, um, you know, just a little summary, click finish. Now, some changes were made to the faces config. I use the wizards to do this. It needs to be saved, but let's look so we can relate this back to what we saw um, in the configuration of a managed bean. Uh, we looked at the XML source. This is what the XML source looks like. We're still in the same file. This is, you know, various views of the same XML. Uh, to make us a little more productive, but this is the XML source. Notice the manage bean name is address. Uh, the manage bean class is the bean class, the Java bean class. And the scope of this bean is within the application. I could have made it request, I could have made it session. It depends on what the scope is of how you want them visible. Okay. Now we have one more configuration element to put into place. On our input form, we our submit action is to call add new address. Add new address is called on our address bean. The method is add new address. It does some stuff, whatever it is we want it to do. In this case, we're just printing some stuff out of the system, and it returns a value called success. Now what I would like is for JSF once this method is executed, return the string success, go back to faces config, uh, 
and create a navigation rule, a navigation rule that says when this action happens and this value is returned, return this or move the flow over to this other artifact. In the example we saw, it was input or uh, thanks.jsp. Okay. We haven't put those pieces into place yet, so let's do that. First, I've got the JSP all ready to go. So instead of you watching me copy and paste and put another one in there again, I'm going to drag and drop it. So from my um, handy answers, I'm going to drag thanks JSP into web content. Okay. That's not quite enough. All that does is give me the JSP. And the only thing the, J the thanks JSP is going to do is say the address for uh, whatever you typed in was successfully added. Notice again the use of the, ad the instance called address. It is a managed bean instance as indicated with this pound sign syntax, which looks very similar to the JSP expression language, only it's JSF expression language calling out to particular JSF core elements, the component tree. Okay, now we need to add, um, all we need to add is a navigation rule to our faces config that incorporates the logic or the flow of our application. So I can use the uh, fancy editors or I can just put the XML source in there. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and put the XML source in there. Why? Because I have it ready to copy and paste from. So remember, this is the uh, code that we saw in the samples. Navigation rule from action, from outcome, notice the word success, and the to view ID slash and the name of our JSP. Copy it. Paste that into our faces config. All right, we have a manage bean name of address. We're using the address instance. So where it's this action with this outcome, success, use this as the two portion. In other words, where the flow is going to go from this point. The flow is going to go to here. And um, to make sure that my code is easily readable, control shift F to clean up my formatting so that my colleagues don't uh, ridicule me or more importantly, so my colleagues don't get irritated because they can't read my code. So that's it. So we got a uh, Simple Java Beam, but it does some, you know, weird, uh, strange looking things if you, if you haven't seen this before in struts, particularly. Um, I've got a business method called add new address and it returns a string value that is matched in faces config to determine where the flow goes from that point on because this is embedded in a navigation rule. Okay. So we added two JSPs. We added our Java Bean code with some special behavior. We added two features to our faces config, one for uh, manage Bean and one to add a navigation rule. Let's try it. So all I need to do is right click on form JSP. I usually like to check the status of my servers at this point to make sure I don't have any open windows. Everything is saved. The, the tool generally um, prompts you to save if you haven't saved, if you have open editors that haven't been saved. But I still have trauma from the old days when the tools did not remind me to save. Um, so I want to right click on input form, choose run as run on server. I'm watching uh, the JBoss build my application. It needs to be rebuilt because I've added a lot of uh, web artifacts. Um, and then the Eclipse switches over to the console, the server console. Server is starting up. And so what I would expect to see is a browser window showing me my input form JSP. And then we'll interact with that JSP. We'll submit it as a user and make sure that we get the results, the flow of the application 
is beginning to make sense. So I enter a value for first name. I'll use my name. Uh, last name Smith. That's not my name. But, uh, but we'll use Susan Smith because, you know, um, it's generic. And the city is any town. We're just entering a few field values. Uh, we want to test our submit and make sure that um, the flow is happening as we expect. So we expect um, to see successful execution of whatever that method was, and then we expect to be routed to thanks JSP if the output is success, is literally the string success. The address for Susan Smith was successfully added. We see that in the console window, we also have those two um, print statements that we had in the execution of the add address, uh, add new address method. So we have those two print statements. Our title literally is insert title here. If I click the back button, notice a session was established. Uh, sessions are established by default within the JSF framework. The JSF framework is keeping track of the values, the current property values for the components that we placed on the input form JSP page. So those input components now have a default value. If I were to click back, Notice those fields now have values. Those are actually stored in session within JSF by default. Um, so if I were to change the name to my actual last name in this city and click address, success again, I get the print statement. So JSF is actually binding the components you put on your JSP page with the JSF tags it's binding the actual values of those components, the current values of those components, and tying the manage bean instance to those as well. So the for the current session, there's one value for the manage bean. Um, it's just the values that you uh, provide getters and setters for in your bean code. So there's a simple but very complete application, JSF application, with the use of Manage Bean, with the use of navigation rules and Manage Bean configuration in Faces Config, and a little more robustness in getting um, our JSPs getting familiar with uh, the tags that are specific to JSF. So how did this application work, or how does this application work? First, the user requests the form view to be rendered. That's when we enter the URL for the particular input form um, that we wanted to work with. In our case, it was input form JSP. Upon receiving the request, the system loads the screen layout from the JSP file and renders each component, and then the user sees the form in the browser and can begin interacting with the form in the browser. The system does save the layout of this form for future reference. So if the user clicks on the back button or the forward button, the system is saving the layout of the form in session. Okay, um, And we can reference bean instances in our component values, but the layout is saved in a session by the JSF implementation. So the user fills in the form, clicks on Submit. Another request for the same URL as above is made to the system. This time, however, the system is inspecting the URL parameters and detects that there has been a form submission as opposed to rendering a screen. The system retrieves the screen layout from the session, um, the JSF runtime, in other words. For each input component on the form, the system transfers the parameter value to the associated Manage Bean property, calling the setter on the Manage Bean instance, keeping the 
managing instance property values bound to the form by the uh, various components on the form. The system detects from the URL parameters that add new address is the button that was clicked. The runtime looks at the name of the event handler method that's associated with that button as tied to the faces config or as configured in the faces config and it invokes that particular method. Assuming everything works, works properly, the event handler method returns a string, in this case success. It doesn't have to be success, but that makes more sense in the logical flow of things. Um, returns uh, a string as the outcome. The uh, system then consults the navigation rule by that string and determines that, in our case, um, another JSP, the toViewID element, thanks.jsp should be rendered to the next screen and the system loads then the layout from that JSP, stores the layout of that JSP in session and renders the screen. Et voila, the user sees the results in the browser. Now, an interesting piece of looking at this if you've ever looked at the source HTML, did a page source or a view source on rendered HTML, what you might see in JSF is all of this looks like um, in the rendered HTML, the actual HTML form so that the browser can understand it. The ID attributes or the name attributes, um, they're not specifically JSF components anymore. It's HTML components input. Uh, the name uh, value is, gen is generated um, by the JSF implementation itself. So you can't rely on these components always having the same name, but the tree, the hierarchical tree of components when JSF renders these JSPs, it uniquely identifies each of the components in the JSF hierarchy. So there are no name collisions, but these become HTML, DHTML, ad CSS addressable entities. What you cannot necessarily rely on is what the actual value will be at runtime. But if you were to right click and in, in, in the browser and look at the HTML source, you would see a standard HTML form. You would see standard HTML components such as input um, or uh, buttons or uh, whatever that you're used to seeing. It's just that the ID attributes are dynamically generated according to the particular JSF implementation so that JSF itself can keep the state of these uh, components in place. So a little diagram of what JSF is keeping track of what is often referred to as the component hierarchy or the tree hierarchy is the root element, um, the ID of the form element and contained within the form element the various components that we put inside of our form using the JSF tags instead of the traditional HTML tags. So that's an introduction to how easy it is to create a simple JSF application.